Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast Vlog. I'm Sean, I'm your host, and today we're going to be touching on a subject that is near and dear to uh, my heart, as you see over my shoulder, Star Wars. Uh, both, we're going to talk about both uh, the, um, the franchise and the fandom. Uh, I watched a video with Star Trek a couple weeks ago. So, let me take off the glasses. Uh, so let's start with where it all began. Uh, I saw Star Wars when I was five years old. Um, so that makes it like 1977, 1978, something like that. Um, I remember my dad took me down downtown McKee Sport to go get a haircut as a young boy. And uh, afterwards we went to uh, a movie theater uh, in the executive building, the executive theater which was like down in the basement, uh, and saw Star Wars. And the thing I remember most is, from back then, again, we're talking about five years old, but I remember being entranced by the visuals. Um, the, the, the blockade runner and then the Star Destroyer coming overhead at the beginning of the movie blew me away as a kid. Darth Vader, Stormtroopers, blew me away. Lightsabers, blew me away. The Millennium Falcon, blew me away. The Death Star, like all, the, 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 the thing that, I, I will say as a five-year-old, I, I, I clung to those images. I remember trying to explain the movie to my mother, doing a horrible job of it. She had no idea what I was talking about. But the thing that stuck with me was how those visuals made me feel even as a five-year-old, it just, it, 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 they, they felt real, like this, you know, you, I, I can't even explain it to this day, it just, it, 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 I felt like a blockade runner blew, flew over my head, I felt like a Star Destroyer flew over my head, and that's without 3D, that, that, I mean, that's just 2D, so, it was one of those things where, It affected me in a way that, you know, nothing else had up to that point. Um, you know, I was still too young to really read comic books. Um, I, I was probably watching things like this 1966 Spider-Man. Um, I was probably already watching the 66 Batman as Ahsoka comes in the frame. Um, you know, I, I was probably being influenced by stuff like that, but I wasn't reading comic books that would come later on. Um, but yet, he, here I was being heavily influenced by this movie. This one movie that was amazing. You know, and... Uh, <laughs> so... You know, take us 1980. You know, and uh, there's The Empire Strikes Back. I remember going into that movie... And literally, at the end of it, being dragged out kicking and screaming. It was the first time in my life the good guys didn't win. You know, at this point, I'm, I'm, I'm watching, you know, I, I, I'm watching Buck Rogers. I'm, I'm watching Battlestar Galactica. You know, even, like, other stuff, like, like stuff like Chips, you know, was out at that point. And, and like, you know, the good guys won. The good guys always won. That was entertainment. And he, here's Lucas giving us The Empire Strikes Back where at, at best you call it a tie. Like the Rebels were on the run. Han's frozen in carbonite. Luke lost his hand. Vader may be his father. Like, what the hell? Like, at best you call that a tie. And it... it like, I just remember as a, a seven, eight-year-old being dragged out of the theater, kicking and screaming because that, that, that can't happen. That, that's not how this, this ends. The good guys always win. This, this isn't right. No, no, no. And then, um, and all this time, I'm, you know, I'm playing with the toys. Uh, you know, I had the action figures. I, I had... Uh, a TIE fighter, I, I had uh, um, 
the X-Wing, I, I had, you know, the Hoth play set, I, I had a snow speeder, you know, my, my parents were sparing no expense getting me the toys. I had a Death Star, you know, that, that was ridiculous. I was three stories tall, it was ridiculous. Um, I, I was collecting the tops trading cards. I was working, I'd do chores around the house and then when I'd get my change, I'd run up to the little grocery store to the top of the hill. It was just a little, it was a little deli slash candy store. And, uh, but they, they had, they would have a, a box of Star Wars cards there. I'd, I'd buy as many as I could. And, uh, I, I just, I love Star Wars. Like, everything was Star Wars for me. Um, you know, I, I had other things, I, I, you know, but, but Star Wars was what I came back to. You know, you go to 1983, and you know, by this time I'm, I'm 11. And it's still, I, you know, I know in the podcast we make fun of Empire, we make fun of the Ewoks, but, you know, and there was a little bit of me that was like kind of jaded at that point, like, get the f These teddy bears? But overall, I still love the movie. I love the trilogy. Like, the trilogy was amazing to me. It, you know, it, it was everything I thought movies should be. And, I mean, that led us into the 80s and, uh, you know, what m m maybe the, the best decade for movies. You know, when you look at, you know, some of the, like, you know, this Spielberg and... Cameron and I mean you know the, the guys who kind of came up I mean Spielberg was already I mean, I'm, I'm not saying Spielberg was influenced by Lucas but you know but big budget big spectacular movies became the norm starting in the 1980s based upon the success of Jaws and Star Wars so but now the trilogy's over we're all done uh, you know there's really nothing left to do, it seemed like. But you didn't want that. Like, you didn't want this the story to end. And, you, you, you know, you'd read stuff about, well, Lucas is like, well, it's really nine movies, and maybe we'll get around to doing the other six. You know, I'm like, what, nine, nine movies? Wow. And, you know, you, you, you hit the dark period from, like, 83 through 99, where, like, the best you got... The best thing you got in that time were books. You know, um, the Thawne trilogy by Timothy Zahn um, is probably, in, in my opinion, still movies 7, 8, and 9. And we're going to get into Disney in a minute. But, you know, like there was some great books during that period, and there was some real garbage in that period. Um, but I, I, I do think, like, the Timothy Zahn books are... the high point of that period and I, I wish Lucasfilm Disney would find a way to take those books and kind of reconfigure them in a way that you told it maybe as an animated story um, and you could bring in Harrison Ford you could bring in Mark Hamill you know you you, you know you can do a voice actress for Carrie Fisher um, you, but I, I do think there needs to be a way to make that work and I know you know that's being undone more and more with The Mandalorian, uh, with uh, the Ahsoka show that's apparently going to be focused on her looking for her Grand Admiral Thawne. Um, you know, th there's a lot of things, you know, that they're doing, but still, th those stories deserve to be told in a, a way that, even if you did it as an animated series, uh, as a Legends, like, it just, that, that story deserves to be told on a, a, a visual scale. But, uh, that's all you had. And then, you know, you get the announcement that, you know, they, 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 they re-released the, the original trilogy as the special editions. And I, I stood in line for them. All three of them. Uh, uh, you know, I, and I have my thoughts on the special editions. And, and I mean, I guess there's a spot for that. I mean, like, I don't like that Han shot first. I didn't mind the job of the hut scene. I, I think the, the, 
the biggest problem, good Lord, come on, Ahsoka. The biggest problem to me uh, was like in Empire Strikes Back, they, they have this exposition after the, the battle between Luke and Vader. And it's like this exposition of like Vader getting on a, 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 a shuttle, going back up to his Super Star Destroyer, you know, coming off the shuttle, making his way down the hall. Like everything, like, like this exposition scene is completely unnecessary. But for some reason, they felt they had to add that in there to explain how Vader got from Cloud City to, to the Star Destroyer. I didn't need that. I kind of figured it out on my own. But it was stuff like that 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 really bothered me. Like even the like the ending of Return of the Jedi, how they they cleaned it up and you know they kind of changed the song and yeah, okay whatever. But I mean there were little things that did drive me nuts about it. But there are other things I thought they did really well, like you know cleaning up a lot of the special effects, um, making it. You know, this is what led us into the prequels. Was This was like the, the experimental playground for, for them to kind of figure out how to do these digital effects. And, I mean, that leads us into the prequels. And the, the prequel series is, uh, it's a mixed bag. It just is. I'm, you know, I'm not going to lie. I'm going to tell you, I, I, The Phantom Menace is the worst Star Wars movie ever made. There's some good in there. I mean, the Duel of the Face is amazing. Um... And, you know, hearing Dave Filoni really explain it even further about, you know, what the Duel of the Fates really means. I, I'm not going to go into all that, but you should look that up. Um, but, like, stuff like that. Like, I mean, there, there were little things in The Phantom Menace that I liked. But I thought overall, as a story, it was just... Huh? And I think that's the problem with the prequel trilogy is it, it, it was it was politics. Um, you didn't expect that. You didn't. I mean, you, know, you, you got politics in the original trilogy, but it was like you know, the politics were essentially like empire bad, rebellion good. This was like you know, well, we're we're, we're we've got a blockade over over this planet because this is you know, we're trying to create get a a trade treaty with them. And I, what the hell is going on? This makes no sense. But that's what. Lucas did you know I thought Clone Wars or Attack of the Clones is a better movie um, I, I thought Revenge of the Sith had a great beginning and had a great ending and the middle was really a snooze fest um, I, I thought Clones was the best overall movie and I know I'm, I'm in the, the minority when I say that I know most people hate that movie and hate you know um the portrayal of Anakin Skywalker in that movie by Hayden Christensen in both movies, but particularly that one. And, uh, I, you know, from an acting standpoint, like, I, I'm not going to criticize acting too, too much. Um, because I'm not an actor. I can't do it. I can barely do this. How, how am I going to, how am I going to act? So, um, so from that standpoint, like, I, 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 I don't, like, bashing Hayden Christensen or any actor because it's something I can't do but at the same time you know I mean he, he wasn't his best like I, I I don't hold him completely responsible for how Anakin Skywalker is portrayed I think that's partly George Lucas because when you get into the Clone Wars cartoon man is Anakin a badass and heroic and a deep character and you know Hayden Christensen unfortunately didn't even get the opportunity to kind of explore the character like that for whatever reason but in the in the Clone Wars cartoon where you could really get into him man he was a great character but the Hayden Christensen version doesn't live up to that Clone Wars version for some for whatever reason and that's another thing like you know the Clone Wars is phenomenal that's a great cartoon like it really does it does it like for a time period that you know, like people like like hated when it comes to the prequels, the Clone Wars cartoon does a great job of making that more appetizing. And, uh, and I, you know, I, I applaud George Lucas for, for doing that and making it a cartoon that, I mean, it was meant for children, 
but it also dealt with some very deep themes and uh it's a really really well done show and and really worth checking into and then when Di then comes along disney and disney buys lucasfilm and one of the first things they do is they shut down the clone wars and they give us star wars rebels and star wars rebels is a great show as well and uh again you know the smart thing was they kept Dave Filoni and kept him involved, and he's kind of like the guy who, as I've said before, has studied at the foot of the master and knows Star Wars probably better than anybody other than George Lucas. Um, but we get into the Disney years, and you start with The Force Awakens. I like The Force Awakens. I think it's a really good jump start to the series. It felt like Star Wars again. Um, I, I, I liked the characters. I, I, I thought this was a great setup for movies two and three. And then this is where the problem comes in. So J.J. Abrams directs The Force Awakens and he steps away. Now nobody has a plan. Nobody knows what the next steps are. And you get The Last Jedi. The Last Jedi is a great movie. There's parts I don't like about it, particularly the casino stuff. The, the Finn Rose story, unfortunately, suffers. Ryan Johnson comes in and creates a great movie. He want, he, The thing he wanted to delve into was the force and the relationship between light and dark and the relationship between Rey and Kylo Ren using Luke Skywalker as, as a, a fulcrum as you know the, the guy between the two I trained Kylo Ren I, I trained Ben Skywalker and this is where, where we're at because of my misdeeds and I'm making the same mistake with you. You're too powerful. I can't deal with this. You know, and uh, I, I liked a lot of what Ryan Johnson did in that movie. Unfortunately, it's a square peg in a round hole. And this is the problem that they had. They had nobody guiding the ship. They had nobody who said, this is what this trilogy is meant to be. This is we need to get from A to B to C. And this is how we do it. Nobody did that. And so as good as The Last Jedi is, it doesn't fit with The Force Awakens. It really doesn't. If you look at it, 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 you know, it just doesn't fit. And when you get to The Rise of Skywalker, you know, that's another square peg trying to be fit into a round hole because of what The Last Jedi set up. And then in this sets it, you know, it, it was just, I don't blame the directors, I don't blame the writers. I, I, I blame Kathleen Kennedy for this because she didn't have somebody in place to shepherd the story. She didn't have somebody in place to to know where the story went. Nobody created a Bible that said, we go from here to here to here. You know, I know George Lucas has always said that he knew where the original trilogy was going. He knew, he, he knew where the, the, the sequel trilogy was going. He didn't know where the, 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 the original trilogy went, but he was at least a guy behind it the entire time so he knew what you know how how to fit Re Empire and Return of the Jedi together you know they just kind of greenlit The Last Jedi based on Wallace Ryan Johnson it's a really cool story but unfortunately in this trilogy of movies we're trying to tell it doesn't fit and I blame Kathleen Kennedy for that she should have had somebody even you know I know they wanted to be J.J. Abrams and it didn't end up being that guy but they needed somebody to be that guy or gal, that person who, who knew what the story was. And because of that, the, the, the sequel trilogy suffers greatly because it doesn't fit together 
the way the other two trilogies do. I'm not going to go down, because we're going to get into the fandom in a second, so I'm not going to, you know, but... I still like the, the sequel trilogy. I like The Force Awakens a lot. I love The Last Jedi for what it is. The Rise of Skywalker suffers greatly, but again, much like The Phantom Menace, there are moments in it that I absolutely love, and there are things that I absolutely despise. And I'm also going to throw in real quick the, you know, Rogue One had its problems, but they fixed it, and it's an amazing movie. Solo had its problems, they fixed it. It's an amazing movie. You know, so they got to find, you know, and you get into the Mandalorian and you know, all the other stuff. You know, there are a lot of good things that they've done during this time period, but there's a lot of bad that they've done during this time period. So, that leads me to the fandom. And very quickly, I'm, I want to discuss the fandom because Star Wars fandom, more than any other fandom, annoys the shit out of me. It is the most toxic fan base there is. I don't know why. I mean, they're driving people off of social media. You know, they... they Kelly Marie Tran deserved better treatment from Star Wars fans than she got. It's a, I, I know it's a vocal minority, but the problem is they're vocal. They're extraordinarily vocal. Um, I, I think the Star Wars fans get painted with a brush because of that. That, you know, it's just a toxic, toxic fan base. And I can't disagree with that, but at the same time, I'm not. I had no problem with Kelly Marie Tran. I have no problem with the character of Rose Tika. I just think she was used poorly in The Last Jedi, and she wasn't used at all in The Rise of Skywalker. At the end of the at the end of the day, Star Wars fans are its own biggest problem. Um, and I hate saying that because I know plenty of good ones, but it's the bad ones and it's the vocal ones, the ones who will harass an actress, the ones who. Boo hoo because Ray is the force sensitive one. She's the Jedi. She's the one who got to go to Luke Skywalker. Um, it's not a guy. This is, you've ruined my childhood. What have you done? This sucks. It, shut up. Just shut up. Honestly. Like, I'm tired of it. Like, just let it go. If you feel that strongly about it, let it go. Because we don't need you. We'll be fine without you. Appreciate what you get. I was there for the dark years. I was there for the years where there was nothing. Do I want it to be better? Absolutely. Do I feel like Dave Filoni and, and, and John Favreau could be the, 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 the people who lead Star Wars in the right direction? Absolutely. But don't... Don't tell me you your childhood was ruined because of the sequel trilogy. It wasn't. So... That's where I'm at. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this. I, I really do. Um, if you, if you know, like a friend, be a friend, tell a friend, as they say. Um, and uh, remember, you can always check out our podcast, the Pittsburgh Nerd Podcast, each and every week. Just search on your favorite podcatcher app, and you'll probably find us very easily. Um, we're also on Facebook and Twitter. Just search Pittsburgh Nerd. Very, very easy to find. Um, and on that note, 
Oh yeah, don't forget, if you do like this, hit the subscribe button and also the that bell for notifications if you want to know when we're posting shit. Otherwise, we usually post it on, on Saturdays and Wednesdays now. Saturdays and Wednesdays. And on that note, the dreamer has awakened.